Nick Castellanos should be the number one target for the Phillies coming out of the lockout, looking at the entire landscape of available players, either through trade or free agency. Castellanos should be the guy for the Phillies. In this video, we're going to talk about why, take a quick look at Castellanos, and talk about how the team would look with him. Be sure to hit that like button. Phillies fans, if you want Castellanos on the team, and if you're not a Phillies fan, make sure to hit the like just to show your support. Let me know if this is some content that you like. With that like count, I can know if you guys are enjoying what I'm doing. Also, a quick reminder to subscribe if you are new and just finding the channel for the first time. And if you are a viewer of the channel but you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit that sub. That way it is easier for you to find your way back to the channel. And if you're enjoying this series, make sure to check out and stay close because we're doing this for a lot of teams. And depending on when you're watching this video, may have already done your favorite team. So check out the homepage for the channel as well for some of the other number one target out of the lockout videos. So here we go. Let's get back into this. Let's talk about Castellanos as the Phillies number one target. It is where they need to go. They need to have an impact right-handed bat. Hoskins just hasn't been it is just i don't know something is missing there uh we like real muto that's fine uh bomb did not do what we had all thought that he could do last year in his second second season but castellanos is the play here you need to have essentially bryce harper's equal from the right side of the plate hitting with him in the lineup you didn't go out and signed Bryce Harper to that contract for those years to just sit and watch the Mets be as active and aggressive as they are and to watch the Braves win the World Series. You didn't do that. That's not what Bryce Harper went through. That's not why you spent that money. That's not why you renewed JT Real Muto last offseason. So get the deal done. More needs to be done. All right, support that pitching staff. You're going to hope Nola bounces back. You got something good with Wheeler. You need to bring some other guys up and advance them and get them to become better. That's fine. Whatever. You know, the rotation is still pitching is still a need for the Phillies. We've talked about that You know, a trade needs to happen as well. Maybe for Kimbrell. We've talked about that. But this is the number one target. I think you get a bounce back from Nola. You get some good stuff from Wheeler. Your rotation starts to fall into place. If you stick with Kniebel as your closer, I think you're okay. It's the lineup. Got to get the lineup squared away. Need to have more support for Bryce Harper. The MVP needs more around him if this team wants to make it. We're going to take a look at the Phillies lineup, and you can see there's just some spots where you're like, eh, eh, and you can't have that. You cannot have that because the Phillies need to be out there trying to win the National League East. And right now, they are third at best with the Marlins not too far behind. And the Nats, you know, you never know. The Nats might pull off a surprising move or two. And then all of a sudden, the Phillies are like, wow, we really got to fight. Get this thing going. Get it on track. Surround Bryce Harper with talent. Get Nick Castellanos. Let's take a look at his numbers. Nick Castellanos for his career. Power numbers really came to him back in 2019 when he was traded from the Tigers to the Cubs. He's got to go to the right place. He's got to go to a ballpark where he can hit home runs. Uh, if he doesn't, he's going to hit for a lot of doubles. You see those doubles, 40 and 50 doubles. Uh, when he's got the power, you see the 30 home runs and the doubles are, are back in the 30s. So he's got the power. And last year, his age 29 season, he established himself as one of the best hitters in the National League with 34 home runs, 100 runs driven in, a 939 OPS, and entering his age 30 season, there's more to like. There's more to be had. He's still in that prime window, so you can expect age 30, 31, 32, 33 can all be good years for him. Now, you might have to give him the contract that takes him to age 36, age 37, but you're going to have to figure that out. National League's going to have the DH most likely. So he, maybe he's a future DH. Um, you know, he might have to, to arm wrestle Harper for that in, in, you know, six or seven years, depending on who's still on the team. But that's, that's a problem for down the road. Right now, Castellano steps in there and immediately gives that lineup some legitimacy. Let's take a look at the lineup real quick, and then we're going to answer the questions. We're going to answer the questions, why Castellanos over some of the other guys. But since we're talking on, since we're on the topic, let's look at the lineup. So you'd have Segura still leading off for now. Uh, and you, I would move Real Muto to two. In, in my lineup, I know in other areas you're gonna not you're not gonna see Real Muto two, but I have Real Muto two, Harper three, Castellanos 
four. Then we go Hoskins, five. Gregorius, six. Baum, seven. Eight and nine. More moves need to be made, okay? That's what I'm going to say. We need to be talking about Kyle Schwarber. We need we need to be talking about bringing Brad Miller back. We need to do more here, okay? Things need, need to get, get, in the, get in the conversation for Rizzo and move Hoskins to DH. Something needs to happen because if you have Hasley and Moniak back there and let's say Baum struggles again, you're in trouble. This is what I talk about with that lineup where you look at the lineup and you're like, eh, eh. That's why this needs to happen. Because once you have Castellanos, you can you can pull this thing together. You can make it work with one more move again, whether it's Rizzo for first or Schwarber for first or DH or you find the outfield spot. Maybe you, I don't know, you move Harper to center, move Harper to center, uh, Castellanos to right, and you have Kyle Schwarber in left. They need to be aggressive. And Phillies fans, I, I know it drove you crazy. With that CBA lockout, when that was looming, and there was all that activity, and the Phillies were basically sitting silent. They bring in Corey Kniebel, and that was it, right? Where where, where are they, right? They, they didn't bring back McCutcheon. They didn't bring back Herrera. So you're like, come on. They were waiting. And I think they were waiting because in my mind, in my heart of hearts, I think they know that they need to do what I'm talking about, but they want to wait. They want to make sure they have the DH. They want to know what the penalties are if they go over the luxury tax. They want to know the financial situation that they're going to be playing with. A lot of teams took that approach, and there are still a lot of players still available. You still got Bryant. You still got Rizzo. You still got Freeman. You still got Story. You got Castellanos. You got Schwarber. You got Rosario. You got Soler. The list goes on and on. Now, the pitching has dried up, but for the bats, it's still there, and you can always trade for pitching if you need to, so get it done is what I'm saying. Let's talk about some questions. Why do we go Nick Castellanos over somebody like Chris Bryant? I think the upside is just higher with Castellanos from an offensive standpoint. I'm a Chris Bryant guy, but I think Chris Bryant is going to be a 25 to 30 homer guy moving forward. I think Nick Castellanos can be a 35 homer guy uh, with an OPS. You know, again, I think Chris Bryant is an 850 to 900 OPS guy. I think Castellanos can be a 900 to 950 OPS guy. And I think financially, it's probably going to cost about the same. So go with the guy that is just that much better. That's why I would take Castellanos over Chris Bryant. And then we're talking about, well, why would we take Nick Castellanos over Trevor Story? Well, that's another piece. Well, we don't know what Trevor Story is going to do outside of playing his home games in Colorado. And if he is not able to do what he was doing before, the Philly fan base is going to eat him alive. Uh, I mean, you can't have that. Just, you can't have that. So I, for, for that reason, I would go Castellanos over Story. That doesn't mean that Story to Philly never happens. Just means if you have your choice between Castellanos or Bryant or Story, I would go Castellanos number one. And with the pitching situation the way it is, they're going to have to make a trade for the pitching. But I, would, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't make that your number one priority. Castellanos is your number one priority because at any time, somebody else could swoop in and pick him up. So you got to get this done get it done Phillies do it Philly fans comment below let me know what you think is Castellanos to the Phillies something you might be interested in comment below and let me know what you think and hit that like if you want this move to go down and Phillies are going to be active something's going to happen they're going to do something they're going to get in the mix once this uh, lockout ends it's got to be Castellanos that's my feeling now there's other teams where Castellanos should be the number one target that's why the Phillies got to move quick. That is my thinking on the matter. You comment below. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you spending some time here. Remember, these number one target after the lockout videos, I've, I've already done a, a bunch of them. There are more to do in the pipeline, so make sure to check out the channel and, and see what else we've got out there because maybe the Phillies aren't your favorite team. Maybe I have done your favorite team or other teams that you are interested in, teams that you compete with in the division and, and vice versa. So I appreciate everybody again for spending some time with the channel. Ball Cap Nation, as always, I salute you. Thank you for your support to the channel. Uh, really means a lot. I do, I do truly appreciate that. Thank you, Ball Cap Nation. Um, appreciate everybody spending some time with the channel. I will add some links to some of the other number one out of the lockout target videos for you to check out here. Now, and thank you for watching the video.